Exactly. You can just watch it. Oh, I thought I had to have everything plugged up. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, so, no, it's fine. Well, um, you're going to be doing with the printer, though. You're going to be running the printer and everything, for sure. Oh, okay, it's right here. Yeah, you don't have to worry about running anything with the recording or anything. I'm going to do all that. But you're going to be printing today, absolutely. That's what we're going to go through. Wow. So we're going to go through, like, the process of 3D printing and the four big steps on, like, how it all works. And then okay. we're going to talk about troubleshooting stuff that your students can do. And Okay. That's what we're here for, excuse me. That's what we're here to help. So we want to do tech support like with your students and stuff like that. Um, if they are having trouble figuring something out or something, that's why we're here. Okay. So we can do another training if we need to because these trainings are unlimited. So if you want us to have a, do a, a training with your students, we can totally do that. Um, as many as you guys need to make sure that um, your students stay printing. So okay. we want to we help you figure out stuff that might go wrong or anything that might break and all that different kind of stuff. So okay. that's what we're here for. So. Um, it's pretty much broken into four big steps of 3D printing. The first step is going to be the biggest and the hardest, and it's what's going to take the longest, and it is the design step, where the students are actually going to be creating different types of models. So have you ever um, worked in a different in, in CAD programs before, like a computer-aided design program? I have in AutoCAD, but it's been a while, and I just ordered uh, SolidWorks, but techs haven't gotten it up and running yet. Oh, yeah. SolidWorks is awesome. Yeah. Uh -huh. That was really advanced. And Autodesk too, both of those work great. Um, Fusion 360 is another one that's great, that's free for schools, um, and that's a really good one. But to start off, if you wanna start your students off on something easy, and then they can kind of build up into it, we suggest starting with a program called Tinkercad, and it's just tinkercad.com, it's a website that you can go to. And then students can kind of get used to what a 3D program looks like, and then they can like graduate into SolidWorks, something that's a lot more complicated. So okay. They'll be like moving shapes around to be able to build stuff and design things and, and whatnot. And you'll create your file in, uh, in Tinkercad and you can put holes in it. You can move shapes together and it's made really for like elementary middle school kids, but it's being used in high schools and colleges and universities like across the country. Cause it's such a great introductory tool um, to okay. kind of start in 3d printing. And it's a lot easier to use than some of the other ones. And we have tutorials on our website too about it um, that you can go and watch. And, and after like one class period, students will be able to make stuff. So um, Tinkercad is a great place to start. Man, uh, I should have bought more than one in. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get some more money in October. So if they catch on to this, then I will be getting a package deal. Y'all oh. sale would have gone off. It's gone off. In. What's up? The sale. If I, I we get some more money in October. And so uh, if they take on, catch on to this, I'll just, just order the, a package like you all had. Yeah, totally. And if you have if you have an old sales deal, like we're totally honor that. So if you okay. want to get one of the older ones, we just had added cases to the new ones um, to help them be able to transport them and move them around easier. Okay. But we can definitely still um, sell you the one that you got this summer. That's totally fine. okay. Um, and and that design step that's what's going to take a while to uh, to figure out with your students to be able to go through. Um, and like I said, we have tutorials on our website for that um, for Tinkercad, and we also uh, recommend a program called Onshape. Dot com. And both Tinkercad and Onshape work on Chromebooks, so they'll work in any web browser on any Windows or Mac machine. And Onshape's like a little bit more complicated, and it's actually would probably be a good introduction to SolidWorks because Onshape was made by one of the founders of SolidWorks, and it's just a little bit easier to use. So you can kind of get used to that one and then move into SolidWorks too. That might help because just starting off in SolidWorks uh, might be really difficult for some students because it is really complicated. Like, I am really bad at SolidWorks. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not Cause we went to the conference and we could get I got Solid Edge for free. Oh, all after right. I bought that, I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's always fun and free stuff. Yeah, that's that's the uh, that's the kicker. Um, <laughs> so once you have um, your model designed, it needs to be in a .stl or .obj format. That's the format that the students will get. And you can also find tons of stuff online too. So we have a bunch of lesson plans on our website and links to other websites um, that have lots of those type of files in them. So .stl and .obj files you can find on like thingiverse.com has a bunch of different stuff. And as long as it is that .stl or .obj, then you'll be able to print. Okay. So once you have that, that .stl file, you're gonna put that in a program called Cura. Um, C-U-R-A, and that's actually on the SD cards that comes with the machines, and that codes the file for the printer itself. So you basically translate it into what's called G-code that the printers read. And you, it's as easy as uploading it into Cura and then download it, excuse me, and then downloading it again. But inside of Cura, I lost you. 
Are you, am I there? I lost you. Uh-oh. You can't hear me? I can't hear you. You can't hear me? Uh-oh. Am I there? Uh-oh, something popped up on your computer. <laughs> I heard it go, Duh. Oh my goodness, what did I do? I was riding. <laughs> I don't know. Cura is the last thing I got. Did my mic die? No, and it's still on. Can you hear me? No? Um, try, clicking, try clicking the microphone again. Do I go back to the speaker? Yeah. I don't know why it turned off. Uh-oh. It just went out. What happened? You can call me. You want to call? You can call me. My cell phone doesn't work in the classroom. Ah. <laughs> now you can call my school phone. Yeah, you can call Wait me. You can call me on that. Uh, two, six, four, nine, five, six, seven. Look at the screen. Okay. <laughs> All righty. There we go. <laughs> it's me. Hey, all right. AT and T oh. didn't work in the building, so I'm sorry. Uh, okay, no, that's fine. Well, do you want to put the phone? Can you put it on speaker, and then you? Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. Let's see. Oh, I hung up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Call me back. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. It's an echo. There. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 All right. All right. Okay. How's that? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Sounds like you off like a little bit, but it's still working. You can still hear me. So the last thing you you heard me say was Kira. Uh huh. Okay. So okay. with Kira, so with Kira um, what you want to do uh, is, is, is it, it will uh, be a program that will convert the file, 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 and that's as simple as uploading the file into Kira and then downloading it again. But you have to make sure all your Kira settings are correct, and that's what we're going to do in the second And then once you have it downloaded from Kira, you can save it to the SD card. So you'll use your little SD card right here to save it onto the SD card. And then you'll transfer it to the printer. That's the third step. Uh, and then the transfer is here on the front of the printer. You'll see it goes in right here is where the SD card goes. So it slides into the front of the printer right here. So it goes into like that slot right there. Right there. And then it goes in there and once you get it in, then you then hit print on the printer. That's the first step. So those are the four steps. So you're going to make a printer, and then or you're going to uh, create a file, excuse me, and then you're going to convert that file and slice it in Cura, and then you're going to transfer it from Cura uh, using the SD card to the printer, and then the fourth step, you're going to hit print on the printer. So that's kind of the whole process of what it's going to look like. So do you have any questions about that? You said and then slice the file in Cura. So you put the file in, in Cura. And then transfer it to the printer using the SD card. And then after you get it transferred, then you'll uh, hit print on the printer. You get it? 
Okay, awesome. So those are the four steps, and that's what it's going to look like. So we're going to go ahead and install Cura um, right now to make sure that it's all set up on your computer. So can you install programs on your computer? Okay. Okay. If you, um, it's on the SD card. So if you want to grab the SD card, it looks like this, and then stick that on. And then we'll put that on the computer. Yep. Yeah, this one right here. And then Cura is what the program's called. So you'll find that on the SD card drive. And it's a blue C. And then double click on that and see if you can, you can install it. If you can't install it, we have a video on how to do it. Or you can call us over the phone when your text there and we can walk you through everything to make sure it's all set up. Um, and I'm gonna go over the settings today too so you can make sure that um, you could watch this video too. Uh, you'll put that, the, uh, yes, you'll put it in there. And then put that in the computer, and then you should be able to find Cura on that SD card. Yes, because we want to install Cura on our computers. Nice. <laughs> That's a day. A day, all kinds of new stuff. Oh, one of them doesn't have the one. That one might not have anything. You might want to get the one that looks like this. Yeah, one of them's blank, and then the other one has this. One of them's extra, so that's probably the extra one. Yeah, and then you can get the one that looks like this, this reader. Okay, now what I'm looking for? It looks like this. Do you, yeah, do you see this one? Okay. Yeah, Cura. And then go ahead and double click on Cura and see if you can install it. Hopefully you can. Yep. Which one? Uh, the one that has a blue C. Oh. Did it work? Yeah, and then you can just click next, and hopefully it'll let you install. Uh, yeah, wherever you want. Yeah, and, and then install it until you get to where it says finish, and then when you click finish, it's going to say add new machine wizard. Is it working? Okay, cool. And then once we get it installed, okay. is it ready? Yeah, welcome to the device drive installation system. Okay, yeah, you can you can hit next, yeah.
Okay, awesome. Yeah, you can say next. Yeah, Arduino. You can say next. Because it's just installing all the stuff that it needs. And then it'll be set up on that computer, but do you log in? Do your students log into different accounts in your computer lab? They used to, they just have each computer on a network. Okay. Because if they log into a different account, then they'll, the first time they log in, they'll have to set this up. So I would suggest just keeping this on this computer, and then every time you log in with the login that you're on now, it'll have all the settings set up like we're setting up in the training. And that'll make it easier to start. We've had a lot of success with that. Awesome. All right, I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see it. So go ahead and hit escape, and then it'll, enter, it'll exit the full screen mode. Can you see my screen? Do I go to next? Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. OK, yeah. So you just click Next, and then click Other right here. That's the type of printer it is, because we build it. And then Next. And then Mendel is the operating system right here, M-E-N-D-E-L. All right. And then Next. And then finish. Woo! And it should look like this. So we have two more things that we're going to do. You probably have a little robot right here. And then we're going to set up these settings to be correct. And then we're going to set the sizes of this to be right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and make sure the layer height is 0 0.2. So the layer height, that's how tall each one of the layers are to build your model. So to get a really high quality model, you can be 0 0.1 uh, millimeters. And that will be about the thickness of a piece of paper between each layer, because it's going to stack to build it as it's, go as it's going. We usually print at 0 0.2, so you can go ahead and leave it at that um, if you want. Or you can put it at 0 0.3, which is low quality, which just means that they'll be farther apart. So your model will print faster, but it won't look as nice. Um, so you can have it at either any, any of those settings. And then our shell thickness, we're going to put 0 0.8, because that needs to be a multiple of our nozzle size. And our nozzle size is down here which is 0 0.4 on the bottom. And that's the thickness of the outside part of our model. So that's how strong it is. So two shells is a good thickness to always have durable and strong prints. And then we're going to do the bottom and top thickness. We're going to go ahead and say 0 0.8 on that. And then that's going to be the same as our shell thickness there. And then our fill density, that's what's filled up inside of our model. So that's like a crosshatch pattern that's filled in. So when a model 3D prints, it's going to print this structure inside of here that goes back and forth to make it stronger. So you don't have to print it hollow or design it hollow. You, it'll automatically make this stuff that's inside of it. And to print something solid and make it really strong, you would obviously make that 100%. But we usually say between like 5 and 20% is a good infill. So you can just leave it at that. And as you've noticed, when you scroll over stuff, it's going to tell you exactly what it is. And the speed, we're going to go ahead and leave it at 50, because 50 is the, the best speed to 3D print at. And if you want to print a little slower to make it model look nicer, you can, but we don't recommend printing faster than 50. And then the printing temperature is going to be 220. So go ahead and take 20 degrees off of that. What's up? Oh, that's a good question. So the, it defaults at a different type of material that it melts. So this material that we're using um, that you have is called PLA, or polylactic acid, and it's biodegradable corn plastic. That's totally safe for a classroom. But if it's, this is defaults at what's called ABS, which is um, a styrene, an oil-based plastic, that's toxic and not biodegradable. So you have to have it in a really well-ventilated area. So that's, the, that's why the default is that. And then the bed temperature is zero. Because it does not have a heated bed. And that would be the temperature of this right here. And it's not heated, so it's zero. And then platform support, we're going to go ahead and say everywhere on that to make sure if it ever needs supports, it will create them.
And then the last thing we're going to change is this diameter of the filament. And that, it says it on each one of them, what it is, which is 1.75. And now we have all these set. And we're going to set the size of this. So to set the size of this, we're going to go up and click machine. And then we're going to go to machine settings. And it should look like this. It pops up like this. Do you get it? It's like right here. Yeah, I have a whole bunch of them. <laughs> All right, awesome. And then now we're going to change the width to 125, the depth to 150, and the height to 100. And then we're going to uncheck the heated bed right here. And these are the settings that you want to set your printer up at. So you can see that all these are set up, and these uh, values right here are on a screenshot that's on the SD card. It's also in the user manual that's on the SD card that goes through step-by-step -step everything that we're talking about today. And also uh, there's a, a video that we have on our website and our troubleshooting section that has all these settings and this video that you have too. So there's a bunch of different places that you can get all of these settings because um, there's quite a bit of stuff to remember and type it in. But once it's typed in and saved, um, then every time you log into that account, it'll have the settings. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And then now we're going to load our model. So you already have a model in there, but if you want to load a new one, you just click load, and then you would find a .stl or .obj file type. So I have some right here. So we have, uh, here, here's uh, right here, one of these uh, .stl files. There we go. It's the command module for a Saturn V rocket. So... Oh, you can load on right here, right there. And then on the SD card, if you want, you can click on the SD card, the NWA 3D SD card, and then you can find some files on that as well. But I'm going to go ahead and just click on one of these, so like this fuel line, because it's a .stl. And then I'm going to click Open. So once you create a file, that first step, then you're going to download it and then upload the file. That's, this is that second step of Cura. And that's what we're doing now. So we're going to click open. What's up? Can you say that again? Oh, you can just go to your, um, your SD card. And then you'll see, mine's a little bit different, but you'll see um, a folder that says STL files. And you can click on that. And then you can choose any of those and then just click open. Do you get it? You're, bre you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, we can, we can trick it down. So that's something that I'm about to show you too. So you can click scale right here and then you can change these cubes and you can drag them and make them smaller. You can also change the values here. So if you wanted to be half size instead of one, you could say 0 0.5 and it'll be half the size. And as long as it turns yellow, that means that you can 3D print with it. So if it's gray, that means it's too large. Do you get it? So it should be yellow. And then you can click and you can move it around too. You can even make it even five times as large by making it five and make it a lot bigger. Do you see it? Right. No, I don't, I've shrunk something, but look like I've shrunk the box, whatever. 
Okay, I think you probably have the spool holder. So we have a 3D printed spool holder that in case yours breaks that you can print and you probably have the base to that. That's probably what you got. Um, but if you don't want it, you can click on it and then say delete and get rid of it. Or you can right click on it and say delete object. You have the little robot on there still? Okay. Yeah, so you can click load and then you can find your files. So in uh, on your SD card, here I got, I can go to your SD card right here. If you open up your SD card, you'll have a STL file um, folder. So you're probably in the spool holder here with the base plate. That's probably what yours looks like. Um, we'll go ahead and you can pick, you can pick that one or one of these and then you just click on it and then click open. Okay, awesome. So you can click it. You can drag it around. You can even rotate it side to side. So if you want to click rotate, you can move stuff around because sometimes you want to make sure that the flat part is on the bottom and it's flat. I clicked right here to rotate it. So yeah, in case something's maybe not flat, you can rotate it right here to make it flat. So if it's up like at an angle like this, you might want to flatten it down. So you can click lay flat or you could click rotate right here and, and, and rotate it. And you can see the time it's going to take is right here. So it's going to take 13 minutes. And so maybe yours is a little bit bigger. So if you click scale, you can actually scale it and make it smaller if you want. And then when you make it smaller, it'll print faster. Oh, yeah, that's on there too. So, yeah, I was trying to print both of them. Yeah, and if you want to, you can print both of them. You can print as many things as you want inside of this area. Because you can just load more models inside there. So I could load like the dice if I wanted. And as long as they turn yellow, you can print. But if they turn gray, that means that they can't print and they're too far away. So as long as they're yellow, they can print. So once you're ready to print, you'll go ahead and if yours says SD card right here, if you click on that, it will automatically save it straight to your SD card. Right here where it says save toolpath. So you can click there and it'll save it to your SD card or you can right click on that and click save G code and then choose what you want to save it. And you can change the name too. So I'm going to go ahead and like leave this like keychain and, and die. And then I'll go ahead and put this in NWA 3D. Make sure I click to put it on my SD card drive because I want to make sure I save it onto that because that's that third transfer step is saving it to the SD card from here. Does that make sense? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so click right here. Does yours say SD right here or save toolpath? Okay, so if you click on that, it'll automatically just save it straight to your SD card. Okay. But if you right click on it, you can choose where to save it. So I could choose like another place, like put it in documents or downloads or something like that. Yep. And then you can choose, just make sure you choose the SD card. And if you just click on it, left click on it though, it'll automatically just save it right to your SD card. I got a... Did you save it on there? Yeah, that's good. Oh, each one of them? Well, we'll choose, choose one of them then and uh, eject one of them and then put, it, uh, put your file in the other one to make sure that you remember which one it is. If not, we'll ju just save it to one of them and then we'll just switch the SD cards. It's easy and we'll find which one your file's on. It won't be that hard. And then you'll just click on it and then click save to save it. Did you get it? Uh oh, I can't hear you. Okay. Okay, so if you left click, then you're good. Yeah, so then go ahead and eject it. So on mine, I'm just going to right click on my SD card and eject it, or you can go to the dock and eject it, say if we move hardware, and go ahead and eject it, and then that is what we're going to put inside of our printer. So we're going to take that and then take the SD card out of it. 
So we just have this part. And then this is what we're going to put in our printer. So then that's going to go right here in the front. It's going to go right there and get plugged in. Yep, right there. And it goes in the front until it clicks. It clicks in and it clicks out. Awesome. And then now, if we had our filament loaded, you could just turn it, in, turn it on by plugging it in and just select your print using the knob. But first, we have to load the filament and make sure that the bill plate's level and everything else. So that's the whole process of how it's gonna work. So do you have any questions on how to 3D print something? <laughs> it takes some practice for sure, but that's what we're here to help. So if you have any trouble at all, we, we wanna hear, be here to help you. Yes, so go ahead and choose a color of filament, whatever one you want. And then we also need to get our spool holder, which is right here. And looks like this. And we're going to put this together. Yeah, that's fine. I got plenty of time. You got it? Okay. So now, this one, this part's kind of tricky. So you're going to take this little bolt here and kind of move it down here to the end. Of uh, Take the nut and move it to the end of the bolt. And then this is going to slide into it and fit in there. So it's going to slide in and fit in like that. Just like that. And it might be kind of tricky to get in there. And then once it slides in, then you'll use the Allen wrench that comes in the tool bag, which looks like this. And then you'll get the Allen wrench and tighten it. Okay, my, uh, the back end, it's got some holes in it. No one said that. Yeah, that's okay. Some of them are different. Like mine, mine's just cut from a different batch. Okay. Yeah, and then it'll screw in like this, and then that's what it'll look like. It'll be just like that. And then this other one will go on this side. So we screw this all the way to the end. And then it fits into the slot like this, kind of like at an angle, like that. And kind of fit it in there, and then move it up. And then push it down. It looks like this. It's inside of this bag. With the cord and stuff. You get it? Uh, I'm still on one side. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tricky to fit in there because it, it's got to kind of squeeze in there on the side. But luckily, you only have to do this once. <laughs> Never again. Yeah, I did one side. Do I do the other one as well? Yep. Yep, same thing on both sides. So it looks like this.
and then it'll fit together just like that. Uh, you can leave it on there, it's fine. It's up to you. You can peel it off or you can leave it on there to protect it. Awesome. So then the bolt sits on there like this, and then the filament, go ahead and take all the plastic off on the outside edge, and then pull it through the little hole in the side so it doesn't come unwound and get tangled. Just like weed eater line or fishing line, you want to pull it through the side so it doesn't come unwound. And then this just sits on here, just like a wheel, like that. Uh, no, you don't have to tighten this. It's fine. Yeah, you just have to, and you just have to tighten this part right here. And it'll just like just like that. And it's pulled through like the little holes in the side. Got it? Okay, awesome. So now we're going to talk about how the printer um, is going to work with troubleshooting. So there are four big troubleshooting things to watch out for. The first one is making sure all of your Cura settings are correct. So that's the one that we went over. So we wanted to make sure that all of our settings in Cura are all set up like they're supposed to be. So that's why we went through like step by step all those different things. And then once you know all the Cura settings are good, then the second thing is uh, something that you want to check only if something's going wrong. And that's making sure that everything is um, built well um, and still connected on our printer. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to actually uh, inspect it from shipping to make sure that nothing fell apart. So we're going to go ahead and check and make sure that everything is plugged in right here and here to make sure that we have successful prints. So there are four motors. And we have got a motor here, and a motor here, and a motor here, and then this one. And make sure that all of those are plugged in. The little white and black cords are plugged into them. And then make sure that your motor, this one, moves side to side really well. And this is sticking straight out, and the belt's tight. And same with this. Make sure that this moves side to side, and the belt is tight, and this is sticking straight out, and it's not bent or anything. Yeah, right here, yeah. It go, it's best right here because it's going to go to over here and home. So you always want to have your clip on this on the right side, on the front. Uh, yeah, you need at least two of them to hold it down. So, okay. Yeah, any clip will work. You just want to have two so it doesn't slide around. It might be in the box still. It might have fallen off. Any clip will work. Yeah, I, 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 
<laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so you won't be running out of those then. <laughs> and this that it's clipping down is the bill plate and that's what all the filament and everything is going to build on so that's why we want to have this clip down and you don't ever want to print without this so that's why we're clipping it down now and Nope. <laughs> nope, no MakerBot sheets, no tape, no hairspray or glue or anything. It'll just stick right to this. Do you have a MakerBot? Yeah, but they have a hook. Oh. <laughs> well, hopefully some of the stuff that I'm teaching you with this can help you hook up for MakerBot. Um, MakerBot uses a slice, uh, slicer called MakerBot Desktop instead of Cura. Just so you know. So then you can, you can install that one and get new MakerBot running. You get it clipped? <laughs> All right, awesome. So now that we've checked it and we know that everything looks good on our printer, then the third step is the biggest troubleshooting step, and it's going to be the one that's the most difficult, too. And that is making sure that the bill plate itself is level. So imagine the bill plate like toothpaste on, toothbrush, so if, uh, on a toothbrush. So if you have the toothpaste up in the air and you squeeze it, it's going to go all over the place. And as, it's, as it gets squeezed, and it goes all over the bathroom, and it's not going to get on the toothbrush at all. Just like this, if the nozzle is too far away from the build surface, it's just going to go everywhere and turn into like a giant pile of spaghetti or knock the model loose and be moving it around because it's too far away to stick the layers together as it's building. So if it's too close, just like if your toothpaste is jammed into the bristles of your toothbrush and you squeeze it, not very much is going to come out. So if not very much is coming out, same thing on the 3D printer. If it's too close to the build plate, it's going to go around and either dig into your print or be digging into your bill plate or something like that. It's too close and it's not going to be able to print. So if that happens, that means you got to lift it up a little bit and get that happy medium. Just like if you're putting toothpaste, like a good bead of toothpaste on a toothbrush. The, it has to be about the thickness of a folded sheet of paper, which is two tenths of a millimeter, same as our layer height, from the nozzle to the build surface. And that's what we're going to test right now. We're going to test the tension um, of the nozzle to the bill plate. So go ahead and find like a scrap piece of printer paper and then plug your printer in. And then any scrap piece of paper will work. We just want to fold it. And then I'll plug mine in too. You ready? Okay, awesome. So now we're gonna tap on here, we're gonna tap, press the button, and then we're gonna say set up, and then we're gonna go to where it says auto home, right there, and tap it. And then that's gonna move the motors, the X, Y, and Z motors to zero. So this one is Y, the one that goes back and forth. This one is X that goes this way, and then Z goes up and down. And we're gonna adjust where Z is right now. So your printer should move like that, and then when it stops, let me know. Tap the button and then tap setup and then auto home. Find it? Yep, by spinning and tapping the knob, that's how you control everything. Is it moving? Okay, awesome. Yeah, it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I still watch 3D prints, and I've been doing this for two and a half years. <laughs> so when it stops moving, then we're going to disable the motor so we can move them around. So when it completely stops, we're going to tap the button, and then go back to setup, 
And then we're going to spin to where it says disable motors and tap that. But only when it stops. Did it stop? OK. All right, so now once it, once it stopped, we're ready to level. So we have a folded piece of paper. And I'm going to be picking my printer up, but you want to leave yours flat on the table. But I'm going to pick it up so you can see what we're doing. So we're going to move this over here to the edge and then line this up above this wing nut right here. And then we're going to take our piece of paper and slide it between the nozzle and the surface. And if it doesn't fit, then squeeze this and fit it under there until it does fit. And it should be between like that. Yeah, you might have to squeeze it right here and then push the paper in between it. And then let me know when you get it in there. Some buzzing. Did you get it? So it's between it like this. So it'll be the nozzle, the piece of paper, and then the build surface and the wing nut, just like that. You got it? I can't hear you. Are you there? Oh, okay. Oh, it, it's probably a black, it could be a black knob that you spin. Okay. Okay, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, so then it's a it's the little knob. So what we want to do is we want to move the paper until we feel it dragging and feel the tension to where it's almost vibrating the piece of paper as it moves around. Because we want to get it really close. Not so close that the paper buckles and doesn't move and not so far away that you barely feel it or don't feel anything. So to do that, we'll adjust this wing nut right here. So if we go clockwise, then it's going to pull it farther up closer to the printer. And when we go counterclockwise, it's gonna pull it, it's gonna pull it down. So it's gonna go clockwise, it's gonna go up and push it up close to the nozzle. Counterclockwise, it's gonna go down and pull it farther away from the nozzle. Sorry, I said that wrong. So if you're looking at it and you spin it clockwise, it's gonna go up. And then counterclockwise, it's going to go down. And what you want to do is you want to feel the tension. So this one's a little bit loose, so I'm going to go ahead and turn this clockwise and then test it. And then maybe clockwise a little bit more and then test it. Maybe a little bit more and then test it until I feel it dragging and I feel the vibration on the paper. And when I feel that vibration, that's when I know it's going to be tight. So I'm going to go a little bit more and then test it. And a little bit more and then test it. There we go. And I feel the vibration of it dragging on a piece of paper. Pretty close. What do you think? Do you get it there? Do you feel it? Is it dragging well? You're kind of breaking up a little bit. I can't hear you very well. Can you say that one more time, Violin? There you go. I can hear you now. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, I'm gonna write a uh, speaker one out. Oh, okay. Do you want the paper catching? Yes. Yeah, you want to feel the tension. 
And you want to feel it dragging and like vibrating the piece of paper when you drag it. So you got to be able to drag it with me. Yeah, you want to feel it dragging. So you want to feel it, the nozzle dragging on the bill plate itself. Is it dragging? It's 32 weight, so it's kind of uh, thick. I don't have regular size paper. Oh, printer paper? Yeah, um, I got 32 weight. Oh. Go ahead and just, if, if it's 32 weight, or do you have the little piece of paper, the pink piece of paper that came with the printer? You could fold that in half. This says don't open. With the printer? Yeah, it says like don't open until training, or don't start until training. It's pink. Pink, yeah, okay. You can fold that and use that. Yeah, there you go. Because I don't know how thick the 32 paper is. Yeah, it's thick. Like a, I'll Google it here real quick and see. Like a, 32 like weight? Because I sent out a lot of information with co-ops. So oh, okay. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to get it too. Cool. Paper thickness chart. Let's see. What's it? Yeah. What kind of paper is it called? What's thirty-two weight paper called? Is it called like? It's called premium HP premium. Premium HP, okay. Just because I sent a lot of documents out. Okay, I've got it sliding under there, but. You want it to grind. You want to feel it grinding and the vibration of it grinding when you're moving it. So you can like feel it um, vibrating. This is the bell. <laughs> oh, and I'm not to just be one of my brothers. So you're going to do one at a time. So first you start with this one, and then when you feel this one going well and get it to where it's dragging, then you're going to move this over and then do this one until it gets about the same amount of tension as this one. So this one's still loose. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this clockwise until I can drag it again. And that was a little bit too far, so a little bit counterclockwise until it feels the same amount of tension as I felt on this one. But you can feel it dragging though. It's dragging quite a bit. Yeah, that's a little. Okay. You want it to drag quite a bit. So you want to feel it dragging and feel like the paper vibrating as it's moving back and forth underneath the nozzle. So go a little bit tighter. When you it, it's supposed to be like it's almost. Almost, yes. Because it's got to be really close to the bill plate for it to lay out the plastic well. I forget which way I was going. Uh -huh. Okay, it feels like I guess it's right. All right, awesome. So once both of those feel good, this one and this one, then we're going to move to the inside one. So we're going to move it to this one, and this one's a little harder to get to, and then we're going to adjust this. So you might have to pull it out and then reach under here and adjust it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and make this one a little bit tighter. It's a little bit clockwise. And then move it back and adjust it. Then move it back and adjust it a little bit more. And then move it and adjust it. Okay. Until you feel about the same amount of tension. Okay, how long? It's kind of tough. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought... I thought I hung up. <laughs> I think that's my phone that was beeping. What's up? Yeah, it's kind of tough because you want to get it, all three of them above each one of those bolts about the same thickness when you're when you're moving the paper. Thank you. 
Yep, on all three of them. So they all, all three of them, you can feel the tension on them. You feel them dragging? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of tough because it's a triangle, so when you tighten two of them down, the other one might be kind of hard to get. So they kind of move around like this. Kind of weird. Uh, it's, it's even harder. <laughs> Because the MakerBot is supposed to auto level and it doesn't auto level like it's supposed to. So this one I think is easier because once it gets level, you'll be good to go. And you can totally teach your students how to do this so they can be the ones that level it all the time. I guess I can. All right, awesome. Go ahead and pull the paper out. And then now what we're going to do is we are going to raise this up so we can load the filament in. So to do that, we're going to tap the button. And then to get to those controls, we're going to go to controls, and then tap that. And then we're going to go to move axis inside of controls. Do you see that? And then tap that. Are you with me? Okay. And then move one millimeter, and then tap that. And then we're going to move the Z right there. So go ahead and tap the Z and then spin it to like um, anywhere from like 30 to 60. Just go ahead and spin the knob so this whole thing lifts up. Because you don't want to lift this up while we're adjusting it. That's why we're lifting it up now. Is it moving? OK. Uh, it's a, as long as it's above the plate. It can be anywhere from 20 to, to, to 100. It's totally fine. As long as it just moves up a little bit so you can see the nozzle. So the only part that gets hot is the nozzle. None of the other parts of the printer get hot. This part doesn't get hot. None of these other parts. Only the nozzle that's underneath here, this part right here, that's the one part that gets hot is this brass part underneath this shield. So it, when it's printing, if you bump the model and, and move it out of the way, then you can get to the nozzle. Otherwise, it's really hard to get to the nozzle. But the nozzle is going to be about 500 degrees. So just so your students know, that's the one part that's hot. And that's what we're going to heat up right now because to load filament, we have to heat it up. To load or unload. So to load filament, we're going to tap the button. And then we're going to move to where it says set up again. And then we're going to click preheat PLA. But if you want to unload filament, you go to preheat soft pull. So preheat PLA will heat it up to the printing temperature. And preheat soft pull heats it up to 100 degrees. So it heats it up to 100 because it has to be at a, like a semi-solid state to pull out all the gunk and stuff that could be inside of there to help prevent clogs. Because clogs can happen sometimes, but every time by doing preheat soft pull, you can cut way down on the amount of clogs that you have. So that's just kind of like changing the oil in a car. So go ahead and tap preheat PLA, and then when you see that, you'll see the temperature going up. So right here, it, it's going to 220, and you'll see the current temperature that it's at right here. And when it gets up to 220, then we'll be ready to load the filament. I'm not there. I'm not there. Okay. You went, you went to so I tapped on it, and then went to setup, and then preheat PLA. And that's how you heat it up to load the filament. And then when, if you ever want to unload the filament, which I'm sure you will, you can go to preheat soft pull and pull the filament out because you can't pull it out when it's cold. And then just tap it. And now, do you see the number right here, 220? Is it going up on yours? Right there? No, you don't see it? Okay, awesome. So that means it's, it's, the temperature is going up, 
And then when both these numbers say 220, then it's heated and ready to go. Is it there? Oh, I mean, is the printer temperature heated? Okay, awesome. So when it heats up, um, we're going to load the filament in. And to load it, you're going to take the filament spool, and then you're going to take it out of this hole right here. So you have it sitting on the spool holder, and take it out of the hole so it can easily feed into the printer itself. And then go ahead and clip the end of it off. So use your pliers and clip the end that's all melted and stuff off into a point. So you can go ahead and do that now and get it ready. So you can clip it into a point. And that will make it easier to load into the printer. Yep, take it out of the little hole on the side. Otherwise, it'll get stuck and it won't be able to feed into the printer. And then you'll have your clippers, they're inside the little tool bag. They're inside this. What's up? Oh, okay. Well, hopefully, I don't know. I guess hopefully we'll we'll still be able to go. We're almost done, so we won't need the computer again. But if we can talk on the phone, I can still walk you through it if we have to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so does it, is it heated up? Does it say 220? All right, that's perfect. So we'll go ahead and take this, and we'll, we'll spin it around so it can feed in there. And then we're going to squeeze this lever right here. So we're going to squeeze this and then feed it through this hole right here. And it's got to go through this hole, and then it's got to go through this part right here, and then all the way through until it can't go in anymore. So you're going to squeeze this and feed it through this part, and then this part, and then all the way through this white tube. So you're going to keep pushing it, pushing it, and pushing it until it won't go anymore. Because when it gets to the end and you start pushing it, it's going to melt the filament, and you'll see the filament coming out of the nozzle when you just keep squeezing and keep pushing. And it'll be a little bit to get used to. Okay, yeah, that's, so um, there's a little, you see that little yellow lever on top? Go ahead and squeeze that, and then there's a hole right next to it that you can push the filament in. And then you'll push the filament in like six or eight inches all the way through until it gets to the nozzle. And then because the nozzle's heated, when you keep pushing it, you'll see filament coming out of the end. And then when you see it coming out of the end, you know it's fully loaded. Yes. Yeah, the one right next to the large screw. And then you'll squeeze that, and then that will allow you to push the filament through that hole that's right next to the large screw, and then all the way through the white tube. And the filament's going to go through the white tube to the nozzle. So you're going to keep pushing it until it goes all the way to the end. Did it go through? Is it, do you see like pink coming out of the end of the nozzle? Yeah. Yeah, okay, awesome. Yeah, so when it pushes all the way through, you can actually push your old color of filament out too. So you know that it's feeding all the way through. So now go ahead and unplug your printer. Yeah, go ahead and unplug it. So the reason that we do that 
is to make sure that if anything ever goes wrong, you can unplug the printer. And one of the big things is to never leave the printer plugged in and on while it and heated while it's not printing. So you can leave stuff printing overnight, and then when it gets done, it will move to the side and it will cool itself down. But you never want to like load the filament and then leave the filament loaded in it and it not printing because it can actually bake into the end of the extruder. So it'll like bake into the end part right here and get stuck. So it'll cause a carbon clog and like turn black, just like you would burn something in the oven. So if your students change filament or something like that, just have them unplug the printer when they're done changing filament, and then that will help prevent clogs. And then doing that, and then making sure that you always do the soft pulls, that will help to have a more successful 3D prints. But, but now, we're ready to print. So we, we got our model, we sliced our model in Cura, we transferred it to the printer on the SD card, and now we're gonna print. Our printer is level, which we don't have to do again unless it knocks the model loose or digs into the build plate. And now our filament's loaded, so we don't have to worry about that. So all we have to do is plug it in and then hit print. So go ahead and plug it in. And then to print, we're gonna tap the button. And then go to refresh SD card, in case it needs to refresh. Oh yeah, that's fine. Refresh SD card and then print from SD. And then you can either click on test prints and print one of those test prints that we put on there or the one that you saved. So if you saved it as robot or as keychain or whatever you saved it as, you can click on that. So here's my NWA 3D keychain that I just made and then I'm gonna click on it. And then now the robot is gonna heat itself up so you don't have to preheat it. It's gonna move itself to zero so you don't have to auto home it. And then it's gonna start printing. So it's gonna heat up, move to zero, and then start printing. And if there's anything on the bill plate, you can use this to kind of scrape it off and get it out of the way by just, just scraping that. And that's it. And I'm going to stay on and make sure that your printer's printing before I leave. So while it's heating up, do you have any questions? Uh, <laughs> We're about to find out. Here's here comes the test. Let's see. Let's see if you pass. <laughs> the thing is, even if you didn't do it right, I'm here to help you make sure it gets right. Because we have your back and your students back every step of the way. So we want your students or you to contact us through tech support. Um, we can do another video conference training. Whatever you need to make sure that we integrate this into your classroom. We can help you with lesson plans too. Um, I'm a certified teacher, and so is Michael. So both of us can help you out with that as well. So we want we want to help you to print. Is it moving? All right, awesome. Is it going? Is it moving? Awesome. So you want to watch the first couple layers and make sure that the first two layers stick before you walk away from it. But if those first two layers stick, you can go home for the night. You can leave the classroom and all the everything else because it's 99.9% it's .9 chance that it's going to finish. So do you see any filament sticking to the bill plate? In your shape? You should see it sticking. Do you see it sticking? It is? Okay, awesome. Because you should, yeah, it should like print a line around the outside edge. I can kind of see mine here, where it's printing the line. That's what you want to see. Do you see that? All right, awesome. That means it's printing. Does it, so you did it, you leveled it well. Woohoo! Yeah! All right, Violin, well, do you have any more questions for me? All right, well, we're here to help, and I'm going to send you this recording and everything else. So we're here to help um, anything that you need with 3D printing. All right? 
uh, you can use the scraper to pop it off and it cools right away. So you can take the filament off as soon as it's done, you can just pop it off with the scraper. Or um, if you need to stop the print, you can unplug it and you can take the bill plate off and you can kind of bend it a little bit and then that can help you get underneath it to be able to, uh, to take things off of it, to scrape stuff off. Yep, you absolutely can. Yeah, that's a good question. You can leave it in all the time. You don't have to take it out. All right. You bet. Well, have fun. And uh, you can go to our website and fill out our, a tech support request if you need help. And I'll send you a link to that, too. Um, and have fun 3D printing. Have a good weekend. All right. You bet. See you later, Violin. Nice to meet you. Bye.